Welcome everyone back to our podcast, Through the Word in the book of 1 Peter today. Uh, so glad that you joined us once again. Maybe this is new for you or maybe you come every week. Either way, thanks for hanging out with us. Pastor Josh, you're back again. Thank you for coming. And then Steve this time. We're going to have a great discussion in the end or near the end of the, the first chapter of 1 Peter. So if you don't have your Bible yet, grab it. We're going to look from verses 13 to 21 today. And we're going to just kind of pick in and out of certain sections of this text. We won't read the whole thing. If you listen to the message that Josh preached just a couple days ago, you'll hear the whole thing there. But uh, anyways, I want to just, as we begin our discussion today, take you to verse 19. There's an interesting phrase. We're actually not going to discuss it a lot, but I think it's a beautiful phrase that as believers, we need to remember verse 19 says that there is a precious blood of Christ that pours over us in salvation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the word precious is such an interesting word as we think of blood, the sacrifice of Christ being precious. And it reminded me of the old hymn that we sometimes sing, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Uh, it's kind of a, an interesting phrase, isn't it? An interest, it's precious. Why is that so? And this text goes on a little more to describe the hope that we have in Christ because of what he's done for us and the hope of the future because of the, the blood of Christ that was shed for us 2,000 years ago even. There's a hope for the future. So we're going to talk about all that today a little bit. And uh, so our first question is actually grounded in verse 21. Let me look at that with us. Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. That's all talking about Christ. Through Christ you believe in God who raised Christ from the dead and glorified him. So your faith and hope are in God. We've got these two beautiful terms, theological terms. We often hear faith, hope, and love all together. Here it's hope and faith together. So is there a way of kind of describing the relationship between these two terms in this text? Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. The scriptures often put all three together. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they do here too. But it's our next little section of scripture that we're going to be in that mm. uh, elevates the call for love. Mm. That's going to be this right. coming Sunday's right. passage. Mm -hmm. We'll say, now love each other sincerely and, and deeply from the heart. So faith, hope, and love are together here in 1 Peter 1. Uh, and uh, But the faith and hope is what he's, he's brought to the surface here in verse 22. And, and yeah, they're so interconnected. They're not synonyms, but it is, if you think about what hope is about, hope is about trusting that something better is coming in the future. Hmm. It looks to the future, it looks forward, it says something good lies ahead and we're moving towards that. And the reason for our belief, our assurance that something good lies ahead is our faith in Christ, mm -hmm. in his death, his burial, his resurrection, yes. and his impending return. That is our reason for hope. And so the greater our faith, the more we can strengthen our faith in Christ, the greater the hope that we'll have as well. So if someone probably was saying, you know, I'm struggling yes. to live with hope in this world, mm -hmm. I, I might say to them, if you think about what 1 Peter 1 says, it would probably be indicating to us, um, try to shore up your faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not saved by the, 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 how great the strength of our faith is. We're saved by the object of our faith, which yes, is Christ. That's mm -hmm. So we, we come with sometimes a, a weak, trembling little faith, but the mm -hmm. object, mm -hmm. Christ himself, is what is sufficient for our salvation. And yet, it's to our great benefit that we strengthen our faith, right? Yeah. The greater our faith can become, the stronger it is that mm. Jesus really is the Son of God, and He mm. really did die for me, and He mm. really is resurrected, and He really is coming again, the more hope we're going to live with day to day in the world. Mm. A hopeless person, or someone who's struggling with hope, would do well to focus on strengthening their faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say yeah, exactly. And, you know, people will talk about faith and hope, or I'm putting, you know, what is the object of your of your faith mm -hmm. and in, in in our faith as as believers in christ following jesus our our objective hope is christ the mm -hmm. risen lord as you said so we we don't have blind faith 
we actually have the object of our faith. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I think in the uh, sermon you alluded to the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Blue Jays. And that's, <laughs> we don't put our hope in I that. didn't bring up the Maple Leafs again this time because I felt like that's too easy a pick. And yeah. you know, so I went for the Jays. But, but, yeah. but in, all, in all honesty, we don't have that blind faith. We have faith in the risen right. Lord. Because it's not a baseless it's faith. It's, good. it's yeah. objective faith. Yeah. And the faith then leads to hope. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, the more we focus on the risen Lord, then we have hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then as you said later, that's going to lead to the, the, the overflow, which is love. Mm -hmm. So it's there actually, is a connection there. It's yeah. actually a prayer for me fairly frequently, personally in my own devotional life, my own walk with the Lord. When I feel uh, times that I, I have a hard time believing what the Lord will do in a certain circumstance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like even just praying for someone that doesn't know the Lord or praying someone who has cancer maybe mm -hmm. or looking at a big mountain to climb spiritually, I'm often praying that prayer, Lord, increase my faith. Increase yeah, person. That's yeah. my prayer. Yeah. I honestly do that personally. Lord, increase mm -hmm. my faith to believe that you will do what you say you will do. Mm -hmm. um, as Tozer once said, you know, it's that, it's that idea that, Lord, would you actually do what you say you'll do here and now in us, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this church, mm -hmm. in us now. Not just what you've done in the past in big revivals and big awakenings. Yeah. We see all that and we tend to think, oh, maybe God won't do that. Mm. Lord, increase my faith to know that you could do that here and now. Yep. Give me the faith to believe. Amen. It's a great prayer. Uh, the second question goes to verse 15 and 16. Look with me as I read that for us. Verse 15 says, but just as he who called you is holy, that's the Lord. So be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Mm -hmm. Here's the question. How can we be holy in all we do from this text? Because we all know we struggle with sin and we're not going to be perfect between now and we actually meet the Lord in heaven someday or when he returns. We struggle in this sinful world and the old man is still kind of creeping in sometimes. How can I be really holy in all I do? Is it actually possible? Mm -hmm. So there, um, the key word, I think, in, in 13, to go back a bit, is therefore. And then what follows is the passage that Pastor Josh preached. So that, that idea that what proceeds in the letter here is that sacrifice of Christ, mm -hmm. the living hope and the new birth that we have mm. because of what Christ did for us, that inheritance that will never perish. So I think the idea here is that that expulsive power, again, that we've talked about before of, of the greatest affection, which is the risen Lord. Yeah. So Christ is, it, it, you know, because of our faith in the resurrected Lord and he saved us and we have salvation in Christ, then we should want to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And that is um, sort of what, what's over that. So how can we be holy in all we do? Well, you know, we this side of heaven, we will not be perfect, but we should be longing to do as well as we can do by fighting sin. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea here, and I, I see this a lot in, in counseling, um, biblical counseling is, for example, maybe a man will come in um, with a desire to fight a specific sin. And that's great because they've even bothered to come in. So even that that action uh, is is very encouraging mm. because what he wants to do is fight us and he knows he's saved and there could be what the old preachers would call a besetting sin or a deep deep sin or a habitual sin yeah is sometimes a synonym for that yeah and um, and there is a root there's always a root cause but here I would look at Psalm 36 and I'll just quickly read this this verse here. Um, a burden is on my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There's no fear of God before his eyes. Mm -hmm. So it goes on and just says, for in his own eyes, he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his own sin. Wow, mm -hmm. that's scary. Yeah. Then it says, the words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful, and he has ceased to be wise and to do good. And even on his bed, he plots evil, and he commits himself to a sinful course. Yeah. And he doesn't... Uh, reject what's wrong. So, you know, that's the starting point. Is there actually a desire to kill sin? Hmm. It, that's pretty deep right there. And then when there is somebody will, like the Holy Spirit will enliven a man to think, wow, I, I should care about it. I should care more. Yeah. 
I've been a Christian for X number of years and I'm still kind of, you know, having my ups and downs and this should be behind me now. Yeah. It's interesting, eh? Yeah. So I think that that power then is actually the Holy Spirit power, the risen Lord power. Because if he gets in his mind that you have to have something or someone in this case that's higher than the addiction yeah. or the sin. And that something has to be powerful. See, it can't, we just can't pull our bootstraps up. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you're saying part of the, part of how we actually be holy and all we do is that desire yeah. to be holy, which is from the Lord in the first and place. Even, yes, that's so good. That's very well put because that we can actually drift along and the enemy can keep us from even wanting to go to battle. Hmm. Right. Because we, you know, especially the man who's authentically born again and saved and he may have kind of a honeymoon period of great success and victory mm, in his mm. in his life for months or maybe years. And then something will kind of come back in and yep. it's it's tough. Yeah. So that's a really good way of putting it to get the desire. But that Holy Spirit power is how we can call on that power, because the unsaved man can do some stuff and put some things in place mm. to kind of fight sin, but he doesn't care as much mm -hmm. because Christ didn't, you know, he doesn't know yet that Christ died for him. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that idea about work, you, you know, you really stress that about the fear and trembling, work out your salvation with fear and trembling because we should, by God's grace, like if he's correcting us, we should be happy about that. Yeah. That's right. He chases yeah. those he loves. Like it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's tough to, to kind of consider that because we want to, um, you know, we don't want these storms in our life. But if something comes in and the Lord is going to use it to actually sanctify us and correct us, then that's worth it for him. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I would say to the question, um, can we actually be holy? What, what is this about? Be holy because I'm holy, can we actually live holy lives? I'd say, uh, can we be holy? The answer probably is yes and no and yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are holy through faith in Jesus. We are holy. He has made us holy. He has mm. set us apart. He sanctified us. He declares us to be holy. And yet we know that as we live our lives, that we still continue to struggle with sin. And so the no part comes in. Can we, in all that we do, in the ways that we express our lives, be totally sinless? No, I, th I think it was uh, John Wesley, right, that believed in Christian perfectionism. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't agree with that. We don't. We don't see that in the scriptures. It's not in the uh, scriptures. But so no, we're not going to be perfect at at any point. And yet the yes, the the second yes comes in. Jesus is coming back, and as we quoted from First John three on Sunday. Uh, we know that when he appears, we will be made like him, for we will see him as he is. We will be made holy. And the point of this text then is to say, so get after it. Get in hard pursuit of it. And as Steve says, it's a gift of the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit doing that. He gives us the desire that we would will and act according to his good purpose, good. as yeah. Ephesians says. Right. He puts that in us in the first place. It's uh, all from him. It's, yeah. That's right. Because he cares him. about us. That's right. Yeah, he loves us. And as he's working this out in our lives, he gives us the fear of God so that we say, we, we, we tremble at this. And as yeah. you say, boy, somebody who doesn't have any sense of, they just so think so highly of themselves that they, they're not even aware of their own sin. That's a problem. That's but the, Psalm this, 36. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And yet the Holy Spirit gives us that fear. That's a gift. We yeah. talked about the love, the expulsive power of a greater love is... Thomas Chalmers made famous, and we say, yes, when you say, oh, I've set my love on the Lord, we get after living in purity. Mm -hmm. And then we tied this here in 1 Peter into hope, uh, because Peter's just been talking about this, this great hope that's ours and set your hope on the grace is to be brought to you when Jesus is revealed at his coming. That grace includes our being made holy. Mm -hmm. And now he's saying, so get after it. Be obedient children. Mm -hmm. Let the hope drive you that's in your it. pursuit of holiness. Yep. And I think that's one we don't talk about as often as we could, but that mm -hmm. first Peter brings up to yeah. say, the more that our hope is set on Jesus' return, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And I got to say, I, I felt... I got to be ready. Yeah. Over yeah. the last five maybe or so years of my life, yep. I've just felt it more and more and more in my mm -hmm. heart. Regularly, there's just a quiet song sung in my heart again and again. Uh, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. And the more that we long for him to come, the more we say, I got to be ready. Yeah. I want to be ready. I want to. I mean, 
He's not going to reject me. He's already accepted me and nothing can put that in jeopardy because mm -hmm. of his kindness to me. But I want to be spotless and pure, ready to be um, yep. introduced to him or, or presented to him. That's the word I'm looking for in an Ephesians 5 kind of way. Yeah. And it's Jesus who's doing that, actually, Amen. preparing Amen. us to be presented to him spotless and holy. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I work with the seniors here as a pastor to the seniors, as you know, and I, that's a, that group of people, uh, you know, saints, those men and women are phenomenal to work with because yeah. they've come to that place that you're describing now where they just want to live for the Lord and do well more mm. than ever. Yeah. And he's sanctified yeah. them sometimes for 60, 70, maybe 80 years. Yeah. Mm. I mean, with, there's seven or eight members in their 90s here at the church. Mm -hmm. And so what, what the Lord laid on your heart through the, through being the lead pastor, I believe, too, is, is you know leading the church family. And, and then he's, he's doing that in your heart and mm. our hearts all the time. Mm. And it's so mm. good. Mm -hmm. Because we, we, you know, we just see and you know, to put the boots on the ground a bit, then there are habits that we can get into. And people think about disciplines and habits as bad words, but they're not. They're good words. Mm. Oh, yeah, they're good. totally good words. Uh, we have lots of habits and we have some bad ones and we can develop good ones. Yeah. And so even at this church, you know, there's many things all week long as punctuation points for men and women and children to be part of that are going to uh, be part of this idea of, I want to do well for you, Lord. Mm, it goes right good. back to this passage you just preached. Yeah. Because otherwise, what are you doing? You know, you're, 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 are you at home? Are you sitting there? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Are you watching TV? Yeah. Yeah, Christian community is important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, and yeah. that's, that's Accountability how Accountability and discipleship. That's how the Lord works. I mean, we even yeah. have a Conquer series here, a sexual purity class starting mm -hmm. in uh, the winter in January, yeah, which is always well attended. Praise God, mm. because that is how the Lord's going to work to help help Amen. people. I love uh, the verse that's actually in the previous message. Uh, there's a phrase there in verse 10. Uh, the prophets spoke of the grace that was to come to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Just yeah. that. Oh, that's a poetry phrase right there. Grace to you. Hmm. Right. That's the Lord. That's Jesus. His grace is what we need. When we fall, his grace is still there as well. Yeah. Um, and he wants to lead us through. Thank you for those sharing those thoughts. Um, first, let me uh, kind of wind up our discussion here today by looking at verse 13. Right away at the beginning of this section it says, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Mm -hmm. There's hope and Christ coming in the same verse. And I was thinking of this in terms of uh, this eschatological hope that we have, that, that all, it's a big word, that just means the hope of the future, of when Christ comes back. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it means I'm hoping for after death, I will be going to heaven. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that hope means that Christ is coming back. Maybe before I die, he'll come back. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, it's that future tense of the hope that we have. We have hope now, but we have hope into the future. And you were talking about that a lot on Sunday, mm -hmm. especially in terms of Christ coming back. I'm just thinking, let's talk about those two kinds of hope. The hope of going away to heaven, the hope of Christ coming back. Are they the same? Is one better? Yeah, what do we think about that? They're very related, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. is one better? Well, yeah, I would say so. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say the hope of Christ's return is the better one. Mm. Uh, the hope of going away to heaven, though, is great. Yes, hope for that. Hope for that. Uh, because th there's going to be glorious things that are experienced when someone arrives there, even before Jesus has returned. Mm -hmm. But if we think about where Peter uh, directed us with the idea of hope and what we're to hope for. In 1 verse 3, he says that God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's speaking of Jesus' resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then he's talking about the hope that's to be ours. And, and I think there it's that because Jesus' resurrection will be our resurrection, mm -hmm. uh, the hope that will be ours when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. So the the reason that I think the resurrection, the return of Jesus and our resurrection is the greater hope is because that becomes the consummation of all that God has done in the redemption of his world. Whereas my going away to heaven will mean wonders for me. 
but it's not wonders for all of right. of, of God's creation and the That's fullness right. of it. And I won't even have the fullness of God's plan for me. Mm-hmm. I won't be in my eternal dwelling yet. That's right. I'm still mm-hmm. waiting for a new heaven and a new earth. I won't be in a glorified, resurrected body yet. Mm-hmm. I'll be in heaven in a spiritual sense, and it'll be a wondrous thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, not not in what will be a resurrected body. So yep. there's better things to come with the return of Jesus and the, the final resurrection. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's good. Wow. Yeah, it, recently I did a major study in music, and mm-hmm. you may remember this, Steve, yes. uh, in the hymns of, of the church. And for decades, there was a lot of songs about Christ returning, and then it was almost silent through 70s, 80s, 90s. <laughs> And all the songs then were about heaven. What, what were we thinking? <laughs> all the songs then were about we were going yeah. home to glory. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and and Which that's not wrong. Yeah. It's not wrong. But then in recent decades, it's turned a little bit more back toward Christ is coming back. Let's be remembering that. Amen. But uh, anyways, yeah, thinking interesting to think about our song theology at the same time in this mm-hmm. discussion. But praise the Lord that he's giving us a hope because... Yeah, and in summarizing, heaven equals Christ and Christ's return equals Christ. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's true. Too. Both. Yeah, so... Yeah. There's such they both mean glory. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's finish up by, uh, I'm just going to read a couple of verses, a couple of words from the hymn that we sang, that the song we sang, which is based in 1 Peter, Living Hope. Mm-hmm. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. So child of God, we hope that we trust that this is your hope, that you know the Lord personally and I'm walking with him, are walking with him day by day. If you don't know the Lord, talk to us. We'd love to introduce you to him and lead you to him. God bless you. We'll see you next time on the podcast.